<laughs> Today we are going to talk about the differences between outrunners and inrunner style motors. If you need a recap on all the basics of this, go watch our other video that we just released, I think. So in this second video on outrunners versus inrunners, I'm going to go into more depth on specifically why outrunners have better torque density and why inrunners can have better power density. And really the easiest way to explain this is with a term called flux gap area or FGA. And what this is, is essentially the area of the flux gap or the space in between your rotor and your stator. So this is the active part of the motor. How much surface area does your motor have to do work? To illustrate this, I have actually cut out cardboard representations of the flux gap area of each of these. This little stubby motor, it only has a 10 millimeter long stator length but it has a 28 millimeter diameter rotor. So this is our flux gap area. And if we roll that out, there it is, expressed in a flat plane, or as flat as I can get this cardboard to go. There we go. And then on the 540 revolver, a 20 millimeter long stator and 28 millimeter diameter rotor. So here we go. That is the flux gap area rolled out into a flat space. And if we just look at these compared to each other, this one, 10 millimeter long rotor, this one, 20, mil 20 millimeter long rotor or stator technically, you can see that the bigger motor has a lot more flux gap area. In fact, it's exactly twice the flux gap area. And do you wanna know what? It can produce twice the torque and twice the power if we assume everything else equal, such as copper fill and KV and voltage applied and RPM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the other things. So now we go to our 10 pole in runner. The pole count, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna ignore pole counts for the most part. I might have to go back to it, but 17 or 18 millimeter rotor diameter. I believe I made this a 17 millimeter rotor diameter. And when we fold it out, it's 15 millimeters long for this particular style. This is the stubby size. There, that right there is our flux gap area. So just looking between these three motors, number one, which would you think has more torque density? The hint is that it's gonna be the one with the most flux gap area. This one right here is going to give us the most torque density. Now the power density ends up being a little bit trickier. In runners can have much better power density, but it is usually gotten through a lot faster RPM. So if all three of these motors were the exact same KV, this one right here, this middle one that has the biggest flux gap area, it's not only gonna have the biggest torque density, but it's also gonna have the most power density. However, this comes at a downside. The more active motor that you have, the more no load losses that you have. And so for light loads, you actually have less efficiency. For heavy loads, you have much better efficiency because you have essentially more motor to do the load. And the more motor you spread a load out against, the better that motor is gonna do against it. So to put this in simple terms, a big motor is more powerful than a smaller motor. A big motor is gonna run cooler at any load level than a smaller motor is. A big motor is just simply more motor than a smaller motor is. So I, I think that's kind of self-evident. So if you're not using the end runner for all of the RPM, you're not gonna actually get the power density gains that the end runner is possible of. But let's say you're in a race environment, this efficiency of the end runner actually does come into play. The heat shedding of an outrunner under heavy load for long periods of time does become a problem. So although this one has more power density and torque density over, let's say the course of a race where you're just you're hammering on it all the time, just on, off, on, off in a race situation, this may not actually be the better case, assuming you have a gearbox. Now, if you're racing UAVs, there's no way you're using an inrunner. You're gonna have to have way too much complexity, way too many moving parts. It just doesn't work out. But in something like a ground-based vehicle, the reason why crawlers are the only ones that use the outrunners and you don't see them in race trucks or anything like that is just because they don't quite have the efficiency. And I feel like that should be a third video. Um, 
there's not a lot of motor engineers in the world that really, really understand the fine details of in-runner versus out-runner. And, and so I've had conversations at length with many other engineers and I feel like I need to have more of them. And kind of see, the last time I had a bunch of heavy conversations on this was, you know, eight, maybe 10 years ago. And things maybe have changed since then. So I don't want to stick my neck too, too far out on that subject, but this is at least a good start here. I feel like this is a really good start. So if you are looking for something with max efficiency, the coolest running possible motor, you're probably gonna be looking towards the end runner. However, it does come at the size and the weight cost. Um, let's just do a quick comparison between this guy and this guy, our stubby versus stubby. The, this one is uh, it's going to run a lot hotter for the same load. I can tell you that right now, uh, just just by my my using. However, we can estimate which one is going to at least have better torque density by comparing the flux gap areas, and it looks like oh they're going to be really close. I, I cut this one in half just so we can kind of compare them and. Yeah, those are going to be really close, but look at the size difference between them. The torque density that this Outrunner has, the torque density advantage that this Outrunner has comes from the flux gap area. So instead of using this big old heavy thing that's really long, you could literally replace it with this teeny little Outrunner. And as long as they're the same KVs, you're going to have almost identical performance when it boils down to it, but at a much smaller housing. Because of the smaller housing, the temperature of the motor will run hotter though. It just has less place to shed heat off of. That's the one downside of the Outrunner is that you have all of this flux gap area, but a lot less space to get your heat out. And that's why they run hotter, at least in a crawler, they typically are going to be the hotter choice. Whereas the inrunners are gonna be the cooler, but heavier choice. Now, of course, if we're comparing this guy to this guy, oh, no contest. You know, same thing though. The Outrunner's probably gonna run a little bit hotter. You're, you're gonna have a little bit less efficiency on there because of that. It doesn't heat shed quite as well. Of course, it's not sealed, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that does at least illustrate the point why Outrunners have better torque density. And to get into the better power density, we would almost have to do some heavy equations to show you, hey, this is why in runners can typically have better power density. But again, I'll go back. If they're all the same KV and they're all being run at the same RPM with the same voltage, your outrunner, especially this one, is going to have better torque density, but it's also going to have better power density just because you're not pushing the in runner hard enough to get it into that zone where it really starts to shine in high RPMs. So yeah, I think that's probably good enough. Maybe y'all have some more questions. I, I hope that y'all have some more questions that come out of this discussion. Please post them down below and I will either answer them in the comments or I will do another video covering them. So yeah, torque density.